Hi, I'm Lauren and welcome to my craft room. Today I have my final Cherry Blossom Press Easy Light card for my interactive element of the month for you. And I actually tied it with another type of interactive um, element just for fun. We're going to just mesh two things together for this card. And here it is. It's using Lawn Fawn products. So you have our Magic Iris by opening up our iris and then you can push here and see the lights go off in the stars. I was really happy to combine two elements together and I really hope you enjoy this card. I'm starting off using carved pumpkin distress oxide on this piece of mixed media paper. I am going to be creating a sunset background so I'm starting with orange and then blending with picked raspberry and I go back and forth between the two colors using my blending brushes until I get a look that I like. Then I'm going to bring out Wilted Violet as my next part of my sunset and that's going to blend into that pink color. And again, using the two colors to go back and forth until I like how my blend is looking. And once that's done, I'm going to get more into my dark sky. So I'll bring out to my blue and then black colors. So for the blue, I picked chipped sapphire and I'm going to clean up my workstation here a bit. And I'm just going to distress the rest of this paper. So I start off kind of rough, just putting down color and then I blend it in with that purple and then fill in the rest of my paper here. I just grab a coffee filter because that is the closest thing to me where I have my tools on my craft table and I continue blending out and I'm using that coffee filter just to keep my fingerprints from getting everywhere. And I'm going to put everything away and bring out black soot. So again, cleaning my workstation, grabbing my coffee filter, and I'm going to bring in black soot. And I'm kind of going for a vignette look. I don't want it to be um, a harsh line across. I want it to look more like the sun is fading and my night sky is coming in as the sun is setting, not fading. <laughs> that would be terrible. The sun is setting. <laughs> so I put all my brushes away, clean up my station, and now I'm going to get out my splatter box. So first I splatter with just a water spritzer and then I use a clean microfiber cloth to pick up some of that color. And now I'm using sparkle silk to add in some shimmer, but I still want my sky to look like it has stars in the background. So I'm using my water spritzer and my Prima metallic paints and I'm going to pick up some of that white paint and splatter that onto the background. It still wasn't quite enough, so then I use my Avriel white ink spray and splatter that on as well. So lots of different <laughs> types of splatter on this background to create a starry sky in my sun setting background. I'm using this dye from Lawn Fawn. It is an add-on to their magic iris to cut out my background. As I pull it out, you have my setting sun background. I have my little arrow that is used to um, let the card receiver know where to pull to open the iris as well as the center of that circle. I cut out some of this olive green cardstock and I'm using a die that has kind of a grass texture to it and I use it twice so I can layer grass. I don't like wasting paper so I cut out where I measured using my background of where I wanted that first set of uh, my blades of grass to sit and then cut out another piece so I could have two layers of grass. I glue the first layer down and trim off the excess of the little green blades poking through. And then I glued on the piece I wanted to show on the front. And I got a little bit of glue because I get glue everywhere. Story of my life when I make cards. <laughs> and now I'm going to work on a sentiment. So I'm using the stamp set Superstar and I've stamped out you are a and then superstar and i'm planning to emboss so i use my little anti-static tool and i'm stamping out in versamark you are a superstar 
I have my coffee filter and my white embossing powder. And of course, because I'm impatient and wanna make my card, my background wasn't totally dry yet, even though I did use my heat gun. So I'm using a small brush just to kind of wipe away some of the excess of the white embossing powder. And once I'm satisfied with that, I warm up my heat gun and I melt that sentiment down. I still think it looks really clean and I'm going to do the same thing with these little tiny star constellation. I'm stamping in Versamark, putting on my white embossing powder, and then using my heat gun to melt that embossed image. Now that the background is done, I'm going to start working on the centerpiece of my magic iris. Now I'm showing you here what I started with, it's not what I end up using, but I pressed a little too hard on this stamped image with the Versamark. So when I put on the white powder and cleaned it up, I realized that my stars looked really smooshed. <laughs> so I embossed it and I didn't like it. So what I decided to do is I had another piece of my mixed media paper. I distressed it in only black soot and then did the same splatter routine, stamped my image and embossed it with white powder and I liked it a lot more. It doesn't look as smushed. Now because my background again wasn't super duper dry, I did have a little excess of embossing powder here and there. I would definitely recommend maybe setting it aside and doing something else until all of your distress oxide and splatter is dry but it's okay, I like it. It's not perfect and that's fine. It just adds more stars, I guess, <laughs> to my background. <laughs> so I've cut out the rest of my parts here for the Magic Iris and I'm assembling it together. I use some really pretty pattern paper from Lawn Fawn from their set, Hello Sunshine, the Petite Paper Pack, and everything else I've cut out from cardstock from my stash. So I'm assembling my Magic Iris together um, I think I might feature this in an upcoming month, so I will definitely go into more detail of how to put together a magic iris if it's your first time. But for the sake of this video, because I'm highlighting the lights, I'm going to just kind of quickly go through this and put my um, magic iris together. So now that all my pieces are together, I'm going to start assembling my card. I'm going to glue my little arrow that I distressed in the same colors here to the pull part of the magic iris. And now I'm gonna need my backgrounds to get my card glued together. So I have a large rectangle cut out of black card stock. And I also cut out a sturdy card base. And I have my easy lights all ready to go. And now I'm figuring out how I'm gonna put those lights behind my star. So even though there are five stars, I'm gonna obviously only light up three because each easy light has three different LEDs on them. And I'm lining it up behind the star. I'm using a bright light that's next to me, my little desk lamp here, so I can see exactly where the star is and I can tape my LED right behind that star. And as I'm putting these together, I'm realizing that the lights aren't as bright as I want them to be. So I'm just gonna use a piercing tool and punch holes through the three stars of where my LEDs are gonna shine through. And then I can line up the LED to right behind that punched hole in my paper. And I'm twisting the wires very carefully. I know this is sped up, so it looks like I'm not being super careful, but <laughs> I am being careful. I don't want my LEDs to be ripped off the wires and I'm just using some of my invisible tape that I just keep next to me in my drawers and taping all of that down. And once they're all placed how I want, I'm going to add some double sided sticky tape to this image because this is going to be glued directly to that black cardstock piece. So I pull off all the release tape from my sticky tape. I line up where the hole is going to be and then go ahead and glue that right onto the black cardstock. Now I need to figure out where my push button is going to go and how I'm going to wrap my wires. So I'm using some sticky tape to put glue onto the three bands that wrap around the iris. So I'm centering it behind with it closed and the arrow in the right spot. And then I open it up and I'm going to place this onto the black cardstock. But first I put some strong sticky tape onto my battery compartment 
and I'm going to place it where it's going to go underneath the iris so it doesn't have any cause any problems when the, the iris is open and closed and then stuck it down to that black cardstock. And now I'm using some strong sticky tape just to keep those wires in place. I'm not gonna release the paper. It's just there to hold those wires in place. So now I was gluing down my iris in my background and I realized that I didn't put any foam tape. <laughs> so I was like, well, let me put some on. So I pulled it off, put on some foam tape, put it on as I normally do, completely forgetting that I have a battery compartment there. And I glue that down to my base. And then I was like, Oh, yep, I do have a battery compartment. So I pulled that foam tape out and I'm using some double sided sticky tape to put on the top of the battery compartment and pushing my background, I guess my foreground now, onto that battery compartment so it stays in place. And as you can see, I'm opening and closing it. The iris is working, my lights are functioning, and I can go ahead and glue this piece onto my card base. I'm using some wet glue so I have some wiggle room to glue down my background and I'm just using a scoring tool next to me to make sure I have a good seal. Everything is functioning and now I'm going to put on my last finishing touches. So I also colored the telescope and mouse from the Superstar set. I stamped it in VersaFine Onyx Black ink and embossed with my Detail Clear embossing powder. And I colored my cute little images using my Zig Clean Color brushes. I'm really into watercoloring if you haven't <laughs> figured that out yet. <laughs> And I'm gluing my images in between the blades of grass. I want it to look like they're really sitting in the grass and everything looks good. Now I need to make sure my card receiver knows where to push. So I'm stamping my push here sentiment in that same green card stock. And I'm just gonna cut it onto a little flag style and glue that onto the grass. Making sure that the push here is right above the button, I go ahead and glue that down and then trim off the little extra using my small little paper snips here. And there we have the final card. I hope you liked my series on using the easy lights. I hope you'll check them out yourself. I have the link down below along with everything else I've used to make this card. I hope it inspires you to create and you make something yourself. Let me know in the comments what other type of interactive projects or elements you'd like to see and I will have the next set of interactive elements for you coming soon. Have a great day. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe.